I am here with Eric Geller. He's 21 years old and uh, recently was the victim of aggression by agents of the state. Uh, he lives in Hollis. Uh, Eric, what's Hollis like? Uh, Hollis is a pretty quiet town. Uh, fairly affluent. Lots of uh, large houses. Okay. Not a lot to do. But, uh, Would you say it's a pretty typical suburban neighborhood? Yeah, that, that's it. Okay, and so you were on the property of a high school, uh, which you attended, is that right? That's right. What were you doing that day? That day, I decided to take, uh, I, I was unable to sleep the night before, so I decided to go for a walk around town, stopped at Dunkin' Donuts, and I decided that I wanted to talk with some teachers about education and other, other uh, miscellaneous subjects, possibly philosophy. Okay, so you just wanted to have some conversations with some of the teachers. It was after school, right? It was actually uh, the beginning of the day, it was before school hours. Okay, so it was right before school. What happened then? Uh, I went to the front of the building. I was talking with one of the chemistry teachers, and I was informed that I was not allowed to be inside the building. And one of the, I believe the head custodian, I uh, came over as well and informed me that I wasn't allowed to be inside the building. I need to make an appointment with the main office. And it, it was rather cold, cold that morning. And I, I simply asked if I could stay inside the, uh, the main lobby area so I could go into the office and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told that I had to wait outside. And there's, there's a little area in the front of, uh, front of the building that between the outside and the uh, the main lobby area uh, where, where the office is, and I I, I asked simply if I could wait wait there, and I was I was told no. I, I was I was making conversation with the people people there. I wasn't there. there was, I was doing nothing but making conversation, mm -hmm. and I and I, I felt like I I had a, a right to be. I, I felt like I had a right to be there, it's public property, I should be able to visit the high school, and as long as I'm not causing problems, which I didn't feel I was, I should be able to wait until the office is open. Right, so they, agents of the state will allege that it is public property, but then on the other hand, they're going to say that you're not allowed to be there and that you have to make an appointment with some administrator at some level. And they wouldn't even let you wait in the lobby area. You had to wait outside of the school, like, what, across the street? Did you have to make some phone call to them? What is it that they wanted from you? I feel that if I waited outside and waited until someone was available in the office, I could have came inside the office and arranged a meeting with the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uncertain of that. But after... After I, I was told some time to wait outside, uh, they said that they would uh, call the police and have me removed from the building. They would call the police? So, okay, how long was it until the police showed up? Uh, it was fairly quickly. I think there was an officer. Uh, the, the one that the was in very far away from the hall So it could have been more than five minutes. Okay, so about five minutes. And what happened when the police showed up? Was there any situation for, for them to de-escalate, or did they just come up and talk to you? Uh, I, I was I, I was speaking the entire time. I was told to leave the building, uh, and I said I just want to make an appointment with the teacher. And I was told that I, I had to leave, and eventually it got to the point, and this was where my memories are so fuzzy because I don't I don't remember doing anything uh, aggressive or anything on the ground that would warrant this, but I was told to put my hand there's a uh, glass window by the office door and I was told to put my hand on the glass, which which I did. Uh, mm -hmm. and and I was I was searched. Uh, I think I was I I must have been patted down at that point and 
Did then, did the officer touch you? You said you were patted down. Yeah, I uh, just like like a quick late pat down. I I I I was kind of saying that, that I had I had enough, nothing to to warrant any kind of arrest or any behavior that was aggressive or or violent. And and then I was told to put my hands behind my back. Were you told that you were being detained at this point, or that you were under arrest? Uh, no, actually, I, I don't remember hearing at any point that I was under arrest or that I was being charged for any crime. So, when did you hear that you were being charged with criminal trespass? Uh, it wasn't until I had waited in, a, in the hall police station for several hours and that I was just released on bail. And so you've been charged with criminal trespass and resisting arrest for Oh, so there's there's a third charge also. There's three misdemeanor charges. All five Who is the alleged victim in these cases? From whose perspective? I assume you were handed some pink pieces of paper that say um, that a crime has been committed, or that one is being alleged? Yeah, and the, uh, the Hall at school, the Hall at high school, is, uh, according to the police, but I feel that I have nothing to do with it. For one, the, the Hall at high school did no, no wrong, I damaged no property, uh, and there, is, there are no people, people's harm besides myself from being pepper sprayed. So when were you pepper sprayed? Was it inside the school? It was inside the school. Okay, and that was after you uh, refused to put your arms behind your back, after you had complied with the pat down and with uh, putting your hands on the walls. That wasn't enough. They needed you to put your hands behind your back. For what? Well, I, I wasn't told for what. I was just told put your hands behind your back, and I didn't. I didn't want to violently resist, so I just went to the ground at that point. I believe the officer said something around the lines of, I'm warning you, and then I kept on saying, I, I don't want to be arrested. Then I, with, without, without warning after that, there was no, I, if not, I will pepper spray you if you do not comply. It was just spray and then pain. You had no weapons to defend yourself. Uh, no. There was no warning from the officer that she was about to pepper spray you. There was no uh, indication that you were being detained or that you were about to be under arrest. You were trying to go through the process of making an appointment with a teacher the way you had been told. This is the process. And so you were attempting to go through those steps, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I suppose from their perspective, I could have, I could have just as easily waited outside, but I felt like there was no reason for me to wait outside. I'm not a danger to the school. I, I was a student there. I simply wanted to do something. Right, and you do pay for that school through property taxes. Well, I, I don't currently own property in the town, but my parents do. Okay. So, those pepper spray canisters are purchased with money taken from the people of Hollis. Do you think that's how those people in Hollis who work hard for their money want it to be used? I, I feel like they could understand that there are better uses for pepper spray. I, I, don't, I don't think they would want someone who is not committing any violent crime to be pepper sprayed, I feel Unnecessary. So you or your parents, in this case, pay for the school from which you were banned, and the pepper spray in your eyes, and the policewoman's aggressive behavior, her time on the clock. How do you feel about the way your money is being used? I feel it's a, a misuse of it's, it's, it's a misuse of money. It's, it's not effectively being used. It could be used for instead possibly going directly to the educational system to find, find better education to students. 
So the woman with the weapons took you to a building where other people dressed like her presumably touched you in your bathing suit area and put you in a cage? You were released from that cage when you paid a man behind a counter $1,500. He was the bail commissioner. I believe that was the claim he made. And I, I, from what I understand, he did work for the city manager. I ask because whenever a, a crime has been committed, especially a victimless crime, and one of those pink pieces of paper is given to you, in your case, three of them, they usually say that the crime has been committed against the peace and dignity of the state of New Hampshire. And so that is the alleged victim when you're bringing your case to trial. So that's, that's why I ask. I mean, you're paying this guy to, for your own freedom from a cage, and he doesn't even allege to be the state of New Hampshire. He's not some victim to whom you're paying restitution. He's just some middleman holding the keys to your cage. You have, just have to pay him, right? I, I, I actually uh, agreed to, I believe it's called I agreed to uh, certain terms, and all, I had to pay the bail commissioner forty dollars to arrange the terms. Hmm. But, uh, right now, the conditions of my bail are that I do not uh, ingest any drugs and alcohol. Uh, I have a I stay away at least twenty five yards away from the hall of high school, and that I. Have a cur uh, that I have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. An adult with a curfew. Yep. Do you have anything to say about the mugshot? Uh, I wish I wish I had a, a bit of a, a bit better of a composure uh, for the mugshot. Uh, I was in a lot of pain at that point. Still, hard to open my eyes, but. That's, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. About how long did the pain last? Probably about an hour. Did you have an attempt to wash it off? Yeah. You have an arraignment on March 21st. Walking on public property and passively, even just verbally resisting kidnapping, as you mentioned, are both Class A misdemeanors and are corrected when a person spends up to a year in a cage and gives up to a thousand dollars to a man in a robe. Have you considered whether or not you will accept a reduced sentence in exchange for telling the judge you're guilty of criminally trespassing and not assisting in your own kidnapping? Well, I'm looking to sell it before I actually go into court that day, but uh, I suppose I would rather settle for not going to the jail for up to three years than that. Uh, Why do you think agents of the state kidnapped you? I was disobeying statutory law. Did anyone insult the peace and dignity of the state of New Hampshire that day? Uh, if you can say that the state of New Hampshire has peace and dignity right now, uh, I, I don't really feel anyone was really disturbed. Uh, especially, I'm not sure how a imaginary entity can be disturbed. There, there were no human beings that were really disturbed that day besides really myself in comparison to anyone else there. Yeah, it's, it's clear you are the only living, breathing victim in this scenario. What do you intend to do from here? I'd rather, uh, I, I want to remove myself from this as neatly as possible and rather clean, clean my hands of this so that I can move on with my life and not have to do this, honest. 
Are you concerned at all that taking a plea deal or just paying off the state in order to forfeit your right to a fair trial is incentivizing agents of the state to make more kidnaps like this? See, I'm not sure if it, if it really makes too much of a difference. For, for all I know, uh, the officer that did at me that day would be the prosecutor of the crowd. I've known it. I've known it. I've known that to happen. Uh, obviously, that's a huge conflict of interest. But the game is rather rigged for the state. It's not so much on the side of the citizens. Other than that, I've been in a jail cell for about a few hours. Okay, so it was hours, not days. No, it was definitely hours. <laughs> if, if it was days, uh, I, I would. I would definitely press charges. Now, if you hadn't posted bail, you would be in there for as many days until up to your trial. So what makes it different in this case to you? I suppose it really isn't a big difference. I feel like it's hard for a citizen that is not fully aware of all, all the working of the law, especially law that is, uh, I mean, law is not really made easily accessible, accessible to citizens to stand and learn. It's hard to represent oneself without paying for a lawyer. You spent time in the House of Corrections. Do you feel like you've been corrected? Uh, well, I don't feel like I did anything wrong, so uh, I don't feel like there's any need to really be rehabilitated or corrected. Short no. <laughs> okay, well, Eric Geller, uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for uh, blocking out a bit of time so you can get this story out to the people. And uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the viewers who may be watching? I, I would say that anyone who does not know the workings of, of law and how to navigate the legal system is most, most wise to Great. Avoid agents of the state. That's a good recommendation for anyone.